Well, today we're going to look at um, a poet who's completely unique in uh, English poetry, um, Jared Manley Hopkins, um, who was born very well into the Victorian period in 1844 and died in 1889, very young actually, in, in Dublin. Uh, and uh, he was born into a high Anglican family, um, very much imbibed the spirit of his, uh, both his very educated mother and his uh, very poetic father. Uh, and they moved to Hampstead in uh, 1852, when he was eight. And um, he loved the sort of Keatsian atmosphere there and was a great admirer of Keats's poetry. So it sort of links with the poems we did last week. And he was a great lover of nature. I think one of the things he most celebrated in Hopkins poetry is the beauty of nature and a very sensuous appreciation of that, which he then combined, um, as you'd expect, a, a Victorian Jesuit with a very didactic theological theme, uh, wanting to show to people how God was present in all this beauty in nature. And so the, the first poem is, uh, we thought, appropriate to the season we're hoping <laughs> soon to be in, although the weather's cold in both um, England and in Poland at the moment. But spring officially starts on March the 21st, and this poem is simply called Spring. And as I say, the octave, the first part of this sonnet, is um, very, very sensuous. It's a very traditional Petrarchan sonnet with the very strict rhyme scheme ABBA, ABBA. And then the sestet um, brings out this theological meaning of the, all this beauty, all this lushness, all this life creating force. Spring. Nothing is so beautiful as spring. When weeds in wheels shoot long and lovely and lush, thrushes eggs look little low heavens, and thrush through the echoing timber does so rinse and ring the ear, it strikes like lightnings to hear him sing. The glassy pear tree leaves and blooms they brush the descending blue. That blue is all in a rush with richness. The racing lambs too have fair their fling. What is all this juice and all this joy? A strain of the earth's sweet being in the beginning in Eden's garden have Get before it cloy, before it cloud, Christ, Lord, and sow with sinning, innocent mind, and mayday in girl and boy. Most, O oh maid's child, thy choice, and worthy the winning. The second poem we chosen is perhaps one of the most famous of Hopkins poems and like the last one um, underneath these poems is a very trinitarian view of the world god the father christ embodied the second person of the trinity in both the suffering and the uh, redemption of the world and over the whole world the holy ghost so it's a very dynamic trinity, not the trinity of intellectual theologians trying to work out the difference between persons and substance, but a trinity that's active in, in the world. God's grandeur. 
The world is charged with the grandeur of God. It will flame out like shining from shook foil. It gathers to a greatness like the ooze of oil crushed. Why do men then now not wreck his rod? Generations have trod, have trod, have trod, and all is seared with trade, bleared, smeared with toil, and wears man's smudge and shares man's smell. The soil is bare now, nor can foot feel being shod. And for all this, nature is never spent. There lives the dearest freshness deep down things. And though the last lights of the black west went, oh, morning at the brown brink eastward springs because the Holy Ghost over the bent world broods with warm breast and with our bright wings. Now Hopkins went through some very difficult times. He was put actually in two <laughs> situations which were uh, very difficult for him personally. Uh, he was in a parish in Liverpool, which was then full of um, Irish uh, immigrant labor and, and very rough place. Uh, and uh, then sent to Dublin itself and uh, he felt very isolated uh, there, uh, isolated from his family and wrote what I usually call the terrible sonnets, uh, not terrible because they're bad, but terrible because they express such anguish. And this is perhaps the, the, the kindest of, the, of them um, as he tries to work out how to be kinder to himself. My own heart, let me more have pity on. Let me live to my sad self, hereafter kind, charitable. Not live this tormented mind with this tormented mind tormenting yet. I cast for comfort I can no more get by groping round my comfortless than blind eyes in their dark can day or thirst can find thirst all in all in a world of wet. Soul, self, come, poor Jack self. I do advise you, jaded, let be. Call off thoughts a while elsewhere, leave comfort root room. Let joy sighs at God knows when to God knows what, whose smiles not wrung see you, unforeseen times rather, as skies between pine mountains lights a lovely mile. 